morning and welcome to the Vine. We are so glad to have you in worship with us today on August 9th. Um, we had a great parking lot worship this morning. If you're curious what that is, if you live in the area, uh, we invite you to come 9 a.m. Uh, this coming Sunday. We'll be outdoors again doing a blended service. Um, bring your lawn chair, bring tailgate chair, just pop up in the shades. If not, we're going to be online for the duration, so uh, continue to worship with us here. If we haven't met yet, my name is Steve Simino, uh, lead pastor here at the Vine, and we're glad that you found your way to join us this Sunday. Um, if this is your first time doing wor online worship, I will invite you to make it what you need it to be. Um, we'll be singing. The praise band is here today. Um, we'll be praying together. We'll sing together. We will um, read scripture together and hear a word. So whatever you need to be, sing out loud. Let the songs to be your prayer. There'll be a time for prayer requests. Uh, you can fill those out in our prayer team. We'll be happy to pray for you or celebrate with you, pray for your concerns, whatever it might be throughout uh, this week. We're going to start it by lighting this community candle. This is something we've done every week here at the Vine since we first got started. And it's a reminder for us. Um, sometimes we're alone. Sometimes we have too many people around us. Sometimes our faith is on fire. Sometimes we are looking for whatever flame we can get. But however and wherever we come, um, we come together as one body. Uh, we bring all of our differences, but we come together to worship the one God. God who has redeemed us all, created us all, and promises to sustain us all. And so it's with that spirit that we come to worship together. And I invite you now uh, to a time of prayer. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. For the chance to be alive in you and your creation. We pray this morning, O oh God, for all those who are sick and battling illness. We pray that you might bring healing. For all those whose task it is to be caregivers. We pray that you would give them strength and endurance, that you would give them wisdom and guidance as they seek uh, to be your healers, O oh God. For those who find themselves in the midst of despair, we pray that you would bring hope, darkness, light, conflict, bring peace and reconciliation. Lord, we ask that you would just wrap your loving arms around every soul on this planet, Lord, that they might come to know you more fully, that they will be reminded they are always in your loving presence. We also give you thanks this morning, O oh God, as we think about the joys and the blessings in our lives. And we pray that you would give us the courage to celebrate those with you as we live into a spirit of, of thanksgiving and gratitude for you. But we also pray this morning, O oh God, that you would empower us, that our prayers not just be empty words, but that you also fill us and allow us to be your people, to live into the calling that you've given each and every one of us to love you and to love our neighbors with all that we have and all that we are. And we confess that we can't do it without you, and so we pray for your strength and your spirit this morning as we seek to be your people. Be with us during this time of worship, O oh God. We pray that you would join us here, uh, here at the church. Join us in the living rooms, in the kitchens, in the, in the beaches, wherever we may be this morning worshiping, O oh God. May we come with a holy expectation that you will indeed meet us there. We love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in Christ's holy name. Amen. He's all as you are. He's our rescuer, we are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh, how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord, our rescuer. There's good news for the captain.
6, looking at the letter of James this week. Uh, this is our second week. If you weren't here last week, we'll catch you up. Um, I wouldn't say you didn't as much, but you did. But we got this week and then two more weeks. So here, this scripture from the letter of James, we're going to start in the first chapter and then jump over to the, to the second chapter. Chapter 1, starting in verse 22. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they look like. Then picking up in uh, 2.14. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith apart from works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Imagine for a second. Now, I gave these up about two and a half years ago, so it's kind of tempting me here. But imagine for a second you went out and bought a brand new pack of Coca-Cola Classic, right? And you popped one up, you couldn't wait, you popped it up ready to get that sugary goodness, right? Caffeine going through your, 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 your veins. You pop it open, you take a swig, and it's just, it's just salty and nasty. And you sort of spit it out, like, what is this? And you toss it around, and you're like, all right, one bad batch and can't get that bag. And you reach into the cooler or pull up the fridge, pop another one, right? And it's just this, this rancid, sour taste, right? And you throw it away. You go into the next one, and once again, it's just this awful tasting drink. And you're like, what is this, right? And you go through the first four cans of the 12 pack, and you're like, I can't do it anymore. I'm not touching the rest, right? Even if the last six were the goodness that you were hoping for, right? Then let's say you, you, you called customer service, right? You called Coke headquarters, right? And you, you called them, and you're like, look, I, I bought this 12-pack of Coke, and it, it wasn't right. It didn't taste right. And the customer service right, says, well, was the can red? Well, yeah, the can was red. Okay, but it tastes awful. Okay, well, was the, was the box, was the cardboard in good shape? Yes, the cardboard was in good shape, but it tasted, okay, well, thanks for calling, click. You'd be furious, right? You'd be furious. That's not what you're expecting. When you pop open a Coke, or Dr. Pepper was my drink of choice, right? Those 23 flavors that come together perfectly. You expect to have it taste, right? You, it, it, what sets it apart is its taste, not its packaging, not the boxing, not the can. You buy it because you want what is inside, and the taste is important. As we look at James this morning and get into what it means to be a doer of the word, that metaphor makes a lot of sense for us. Right? It doesn't matter how our beliefs are packaged, if they're packaged the right way. It doesn't matter if we're in a shiny church building or out in the parking lot or at our homes. It doesn't matter what we wear or how we dress when we go to church or go to worship. What matters to James, and I would argue Jesus tells us the same thing, is how do we taste the world, so to speak? What, what, what comes through from our, our insides and, and, and out? Right? It doesn't matter how sturdy our beliefs are if there aren't works to back them up. There is a fruit that's being born from that. Now I want to stop for a second because some people um, even now and, and throughout history have had some issues with James, right? They think that he's talking about a works righteousness, that you can earn your salvation, so to speak. And that's not what we're talking about here, right? So go ahead and, you know, quit or send me the email. Um, yes, faith is what justifies us, right? Jesus is the one who do that. But our faith is more than just believing. It's more than just a belief. Faith has belief plus action. If we are truly believing, if we're truly faithful, if we're truly following what Christ is calling us to do and who Christ is calling us to be, there will be actions. 
And what James is saying, if I can look at you and there are no actions, there are no fruit, there is no way that looks like you are doing anything, then maybe we would question, what are you really believing? What are you really putting your faith in? The Methodist Church, as we said about being a doer of the word, not just a hearer, um, has some rules that start with doing. Right? Um, there are three general rules that have been memorized for class uh, in coordination, but three general rules that John Wesley set out, the founder of Methodism, a long time ago. And, and these three rules, sort of, if you can live into them, they help you to be a doer of the word. And they're very simple. I want to share with you this morning. Maybe you've heard them, maybe you haven't. The first general rule of our church is to do good, to do good, right? to do all the good that you can, whether that's, that's feeding the hungry, helping the poor, helping your neighbor, right? all the good that you can think of, do it, right? Don't just think about good, don't think about being good, but do good, do good for your neighbor, do good for your friend, do good for the people that you don't know. And that one's usually pretty easy for us. We like to do good. In fact, we will actually feel kind of good when we do good things, right? But the second rule, right, after doing good, the second one is to do no harm, to be a doer of no harm. And that one gets a little trickier, right? As we think about, you know, what am I doing? If, if what I'm doing, is it, is it good? But also, is what I'm doing, doing no harm, right? Do I really need to correct this person and make sure that I push my, what I think, right answer on them? Do I really need to, to say this? Do I need to call them out on this at this time? Or is what I'm saying hurting someone else? It doesn't really affect me, but is what I'm doing affecting someone else? Whether that be a person, creation, right, uh, nature. Right? Are we doing harm to others or the world in our actions? Right? And this is think about mixing our faith with our works, doing good, doing no harm to others and to the world. And then the third general rule is to do stay in love with God. Right? The official thing is attend to the ordinances of God. Right? But do stay in love with God. Right? Which means do worship. Do pray. Do study. Do celebrate the sacraments. Right? Stay in love with God. Make sure that God is at the forefront of, of, of who you are and what you do. And if you can sort of live into that of doing good, do no harm, and do stay in love with God, you'll, you'll be alright. You'll be alright. Now this morning, and I, I don't want to take forever here, I think you can figure out, or I hope that you can figure out, not call me, we'll talk, about what your what and how is, right? How you're going to do good, uh, what you're going to do to do no harm, um, how you might stay in love with God, right? That might take different forms, different days, and that's also sort of personal in your context, right? What are you gifted with? What gets you excited? Do that type of, of goods, right? We should always be able to answer that, right? But what am I, is what I'm doing, is it about loving God, loving neighbor, or not? And this is who we are. It's who we're called to be when we look in the mirror, as James says. But how do we prove who we are? Right? Uh, I have a friend of mine uh, goes to this church. I won't call them by name. But they, they flew out to Phoenix for the first national championship that Clemson was in. Yes, we lost. If only we could handle onside kicks and cover the tight end. But I digress. This person, though, when they were out there in Phoenix, they lost their ID. They lost their identification. And only this person, I feel like, no one else I think could pull this off. But she had to fly from different, from the airport, she had to get back with no identification. Who do you know that can go through and fly and get past TSA without having any identification? I probably would not make it, right? But this person did. But in order to prove her identity and to get on the plane and get past security, they had to answer question after question after question. Well, where'd you live when you were five years old, right? Well, how many streets have you lived on? What's this, you know, all these different things that, you know, you would think you would know about yourself, but you have to go through and, and answer these questions, right? How do, she had to prove who she was to be able to get on the plane and get past TSA, right? But how do we prove who we are as people of faith? How do we prove to the world, to our neighbors, to our loved ones, who we are? And James and also Jesus would say we do that by not just listening to the word, but being doers of the word, by loving our neighbors and loving God. Right? And I think it's also important to think about, right, you think about what you believe. A lot of times nowadays, a lot of our debates are because of what we believe, right? But you might be known for what you believe, and as you think about friends or other people, you, you kind of know what they believe. But we remember not what people believe, but we remember what they do. Right? 
for what they did. Yesterday, um, Jad Taylor, who was a former youth director here for nine years, beloved here, was commissioned in the Methodist Church, which is uh, very much so that one step away from being ordained, he's serving a church down in Sandy Run, South Carolina, I think. You can look that up. Um, but here's the thing about Jad. Right? Jad believes some good things. And, and people were blowing up our social media about him yesterday. But what makes Jad beloved here was not what he believed. It was the works that he did. Jad, as his phrase, and I teach my leadership, I stole it from him, right? He says, when you're in leadership or you go into a church event, you don't want to clump, you want to scrape. Jed was the ultimate scraper. What I mean by that is Jed was a person that could look around the room and see who was on the outside and how could he scrape them and bring them in. There was never a person, and, and Jed, I feel like it's doing like a memorial. Jed is very much alive and serving, right? But, but there was never a person that, that was too small for Jed to say, hey, I'm going to come talk to you and you're going to mean the world to me and I'm going to bring you in, right? And you've seen that as, as most people celebrate that, right? People remember not what you believe. They remember what you did and what you do and how you love God and how you love them as a neighbor, as yourself. Right? James tells us, um, as we looked at our passage this morning, the first verse, right? don't be the one who looks in the mirror, knows who you are, who you're supposed to be, and then as soon as you leave the mirror, you forget who you are. Right? And so as we, as we wrap up this morning, I want to encourage you to do something this week. Right? And, and if you're home and you're isolated, great news. This is meant for home and not well, the isolation, but meant for you to be at home, right? I want you to get up, and, and, and I want you to wake up a little bit, right? And I want you to look in the mirror. Most of you look in the mirror every morning. I know I do, right? Look at yourself in the mirror, right? And ask yourself the question. Say, am I going to be a doer of the word today? Am I going to remember who I'm called to be when I leave this mirror? Am I going to be a doer? And then when you're brushing your teeth at night and you're getting ready to, to go to bed, I want you to look in the mirror again and try this for this week and see if it helps. Right? And look at yourself in the mirror and say, did my actions match up with who I say that I am today? Was I kind? Was I generous? Was I loving? And if not, don't beat yourself up, but just simply look at yourself in the mirror and, and sort of say a prayer to yourself and to God and say, tomorrow I'm going to do better. And to wake up every morning and say, say, can I be a doer today? And then reflect in the evening, did I do, was I who I said I am and through my actions? Because here's the deal. There's plenty of shiny packages out there, right? We all put on a good face. We like to come to church. Some of us are banging down the door saying we got to get back in the church, right? When really it's not about the packaging or making sure that we're in here or outdoors or wherever. It's about the way that we live our lives outside of this place. And it's what we do and how we interact with one another. And that is the, is the goal that God is calling us to today. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks once again for this time to be your people. We pray, O oh God, that you would empower us to not just be shiny packages, familiar packages, but that you might allow what we put out to, to taste good, to be the real thing. So people can come to know you and to love you and to, to feel love through our actions. But we confess, oh God, that we need you. And so we ask that you will pour out your Holy Spirit upon us now, that we might be your hands and feet for the world. We love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Having heard the word read and proclaimed, we now come to time. We invite you to um, give your tithes and offerings to the church. Um, we are still doing great ministry, both here in the community and around the world, and so we invite you to give in any way that you can.
could be safe here in your arms and never leave home. Never let these walls down. You have called me higher. You have called me deeper. And I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher. You have called me deeper. And I'll go where you will lead me, Lord.